Educators on Global Sustainability. Ms. Ortegera is a global industry leader, business leader, and former scientist and engineer. She has over 25 years of experience, various industries including pharmaceuticals, digital startups, payments, and most predominantly in the years travel and tourism. Please put your hands together for Ms. Ortegera. Good morning, everyone. I'm Liz, and I've been coming to India for over 25 years. Thank you for letting me in again. And uh, I'm sad not to see Jesper today. He's a great colleague. Um, so I'm really happy to be speaking to you today um, as World Travel and Tourism Council, um, also known as WTTC. For those of you who don't know us, WTTC is a nonprofit, membership-based, global travel industry association. We represent the voice of travel and tourism across the many industries that comprise what I call our mega sector. Because outside of our industry, people don't understand, governments don't necessarily understand the power and the strength of our mega sector. So our mission is what I describe as threefold. First, to quantify and amplify our economic value. WTTC was founded 30 years ago by the former CEO of Amex with the 12 titans of travel across the many industries to basically represent, quantify, and capture the importance of our industry. So we have every year an iconic economic impact report. This is the one study that captures the direct and the indirect value of our sector. Sorry, second, we work to promote investment and healthy growth for both our members and the broader industry. And then third, I'll even broaden the third one and say that we enable best practices. For example, just recently we, we re reported, um, an there's an important instructional report that we have on AI and its use in travel. But today I'm going to focus on sustainable best practices. Our members are global and they span every region. Now, we have 178 of the most powerful and most important travel and travel-related companies represented at the CEO level. So this is an important forum to bring spotlight to these great brands and the great destinations across the regions. The bottom row is our Asia-Pacific segment. And you'll say, so, you know, for me, 28 members out of 178 does not represent the, the strength and the potential of the Asia-Pacific region. So part of my mission is basically to profile the importance of our source markets, of our destinations, and of the great companies that are here within the region. So I'd like to give thanks to our current WTTC members in India, IHCL, TBO.com, and the Oberoi Group. Now these are industry leaders that are represented on our global platform. I know we have many, several other brands here in the room. Um, these are the ones that are India-based. And part of the work, we don't exist without the support of our members globally and here in India. And so, you know, the work that we do is not just supporting them, but it's supporting the entire industry. So I'm going to share with you some of the great content that I hope will help your businesses as I speak. And I'd also like to give a big thanks to, you know, here in India is unique because we've had for 24 years the India Initiative. And it's a 25 or so India-based companies that support India market policy advocacy. And it's with great uh, thanks and appreciation to them for collaborating with us. They've made uh, WTC more relevant at a grassroots level, and they've been supporting all of you at a state level and a national level. And for today, I've been asked to focus on our sustainability programs. And I have the tagline here, initiatives for the industry, by the industry. The work that we do in sustainability is not just for our members, but it's, it's work that's done and accessible for everyone. And so we're able to give best practice learnings, content, data, research, which I'll share with you shortly. Now, sustainability. Um, in the role that I'm in as WTTC and also my prior roles, I've had the benefit of speaking to 
leaders across the ecosystem of travel, ministers, um, development bank leaders, SMEs, university leaders, and corporates, of course. So one thing about Asia Pacific is that in the last, let's say, two to three years, of course, our recovery has been delayed compared to the other regions. So two to three years ago, when we would speak to the ministries, their focus was, let's get the traffic back. Let's get the visitors back. So the focus was, of course, on destination marketing. So now, one to two, in the past one to two years, there's been a fundamental shift. Whenever we speak to the ministries now, the ministers will want to show us their new sustainability programs. They want to show us their new scorecards, and they want to show us the new initiatives. And we help them with that. We share with them how we can support that progress. So that's one big fundamental shift. Governments are focusing more on, yes, they're continuing focus on destination marketing, but it's expanded now to destination management. Second, corporate travelers. I spent 10 years of my, 18 years of my career at American Express, 10 of those years with Amex GBT. When I speak to my former colleagues, they love telling me how they're doubling down on sustainability. And for a few reasons. One is their corporate clients, all of the RFEs have these requirements. Their corporate clients all have ESG uh, targets that they need to achieve. And as a TMC, certainly a player like Amex GBT and the other TMCs have significant influence on moving the metric. And so that's the second stakeholder. Third stakeholder, consumers. Another part of my career I spent with Amex Consumer Card. We know that um, you know, through research, what's interesting about Asia Pacific is that consumers here in Asia Pacific are even a step function higher, interest, higher level interested in uh, socially responsible and uh, sustainable travel. So one survey issued about two to three years ago by Economist Impact was very interesting because it showed Indian affluent travelers, they're they feel that sustainable travel is, 97% of them feel that it's important. Philippines, 99%. The average for our region was over 80% for Asia Pacific, whereas in other regions it might sit closer to 50 to 60%. And you know, my um, theory around this, why is it so high in terms of interest? And I think it's because we have so many countries here in the region that are at the forefront of seeing the impact of climate change. Now, you might say, OK, research shows they won't pay more. Well, there's frustration. They want more transparency. They want more authenticity. And as we all know, with the, the EU uh, green laws that are unfolding now, you know, there's going to be, there needs to be more verification and authenticity to our green claims. And so the industry is moving. And it's coming, so my message is, all of the stakeholders in the ecosystem are supporting this movement. And we are behind, because some of these best practices that we know, we haven't implemented. But you know, I am impressed here in India. What I've seen with some of the, um, the major brands is that you've been progressive. And I've seen sustainable movement in the past 15 years. And so I think it's a matter of moving more of the market. So some of our assets and research, we've got a plethora of research reports on our website that are accessible to you, you know, and they range from social impact to DEI to decarbonization, water usage. I'm also, because there's a big food theme today, I'm also going to share a report which is from my former role at Pata. We've got two guides, a buffet toolkit and a food waste and plastic waste reduction guideline. Some of you may have seen the report last week. There was a shocking statistic that came out. Every day, one billion meals are wasted. Just imagine that. That's, in, that's an incredible statistic. And a lot of it does happen at home with consumers. But about 30 to 40% of it is in industry. So there's something we can do about that. Recently, in the last four to six months, we issued a groundbreaking, important body of work of research on environmental and social impact. So these, I have the QR code here also. I'm going to share the deck with our organizers so they can send it to you as well. 
And um, this is, we have incredible statistics spanning 185 countries, broken down by sub-region, broken down by region. Um, and this is important data. Governments are using this as um, a scorecard, as a metric on progress. And some of the statistics we have are around greenhouse gas emissions, water usage, quality of feedstock for energy, employment by gender, by wage level. You know, so it's a very sweeping, sweeping deep set of research, and it's accessible on our uh, research hub. This is just one sample of the data that we've got. So on the left hand of this chart, you'll see that it's the typical profile. This is the global um, average for what are the contributions by the different segments across our industry in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. And typically, the first pillar, the blue one on the left, is um, transportation. So you'll see that the proportion is high for most countries. The, the bar charts on the right in the yellow box represent India. So what makes this interesting is that, you know, with all the incredible infrastructure bill that's happening, and that's so encouraging here in the market, um, this profile will probably evolve and change. So the statistics go much deeper than this to indicate, okay, where is their opportunity? Where can we improve? Workforce. So this is another, this in, as an example in the social impact realm, the share of female workers in the formal sector. When I first saw these statistics, I thought they were wrong for Asia because I've seen research that says our industry is comprised of 50 to 60% women. This one says 38% for Asia Pacific. And um, you'll see the average is higher for Europe and North America. I think the statistic that was very surprising to me was that India travel and tourism registers at only 11.4%. So I have much respect for the fact that there is culture and history behind this, but I also know that in this market, like every other market globally, your critical constraint is talent. And the other aspect is you want to know how to attract more international travelers. Well, what we know in travel is, who is the tip what's the profile of the typical leisure travel um, customer? Predominantly female. So, whether it's in terms of uh, management or, uh, uh, you know, and I think the critical thing about this statistic is that it is the formal sector. Women tend to staff the front lines, but we need them up the ranks. We need them in management, and they'll help you. They'll help you um, develop a more diverse, appealing product for your buyers. So one. Um, keystone pro program for us is Hotel Sustainability Basics. And again, this is designed to support the industry. An another initiative to support the industry. On the bottom left, you'll see the heart shape that's green. This is the logo that we will give to properties that have achieved this first level of sustainable hospitality practices. It's a starter program. But some of the hotels that have advanced to higher levels, they use this to basically signify that they've achieved this and beyond. And it's a three-year program. It means achieving, meeting 12 criteria. And the power of this is that it's globally endorsed, third-party verified. It's been deployed across 73 countries, and I'm going to give a special recognition to Radisson because they really conceived of this idea and came to WTTC, and that's how it became to fruition. So they've been a great partner in terms of advocating this program. <laughs> Intrepid last week made the news, and they said that basically their suppliers are going to carry the brand, um, and GSTC. Global Sustainability Tourism Council. I was really happy to partner with um, Randy, the CEO of GSTC, which is globally respected as a high standard. Um, and so now WTTC as the first level is bridged into GSTC certification. We have 12 criteria, they have 42 criteria. And we're going to bridge and have an intermediate version that is about 20 criteria. So you now have very clear manageable steps um, how to get to full certification. And, you know, this is a guide for all of you. And I'm really pleased today to, to recognize um, these four or five organizations. Um, and just, you know, this just became concrete 
about 24 hours ago. Make My Trip is also going to be advocating um, for uh, hotel sustainability basics. So that logo is going to show up for any of the properties. Yay. Um, that logo is going to show up for any of the properties that achieve our level of, of verification. So thank you so much because this is really, you know, this kind of movement and support is what we need to, to move the market. So thank you. This is a free toolkit from WTDC on sustainability basics. If you don't catch this, don't worry. You can go onto our website and find our content. And then last but not least, um, we are hosting our global summit in Perth, Australia, which is relevant to the whole Asia Pacific region. And I'm excited about that. I'd like to welcome the senior leaders in the room to come join us. This is October 8th through 10th. Um, and really, this, the, the WTTC summits are like the who -who, who's who of the important leaders across the industry globally. And so I hope that we have a great uh, delegation that comes across from India and across the region. And so I hope to see you there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Ortegara, that we truly enjoyed that session today. For our